So in this question, we need to identify uh, which of the following units could only be used for a scalar quantity. So the first one, we can identify this to be the units for velocity meters per second. So we know it's displacement over, over time. So velocity, it's a, scale, it's a vector quantity, therefore it's not this one. Then for P, we can identify that this is for acceleration, which is the change of velocity over time. So it's meters per second, per second, therefore it's meters per second squared. So this is also a vector quantity, so it's not what we're looking for. Then for C, we have the acceleration units and we have the mass unit as well. So in that case, we'll be looking at mass and acceleration. MA, this is force, this is Newton's law, second law. So therefore, this will be for force, definitely not a vector quantity. So the only one which we have left is D, which is kilograms, and this is meter cube. Uh, so that will be for density, because we know that density is mass over volume. So mass will be in kilograms, volume will be in meters cube, both of these are divided, therefore D is the right answer. So this one is about a space rocket that is in orbit um, around the Earth and the engines are switched off. All right. So what does this mean? It means that there's no forces acting from the engine. So if this is the Earth, then this space rocket is moving in orbit around the Earth. Now, if we look at the space rocket in a few different positions, right? So the, the, the speed, it might be the same. So I'm just gonna put like 100 kilometers per hour, let's say. So in every position, the speed will be the same. So the value of the speed is always the same. But we can see that in each case, it's moving in a different direction. So even though the magnitude is the same, the direction is different. Therefore, the velocity, since the direction is changing, therefore the velocity is changing as well. So our answer should be one of these two, described changing velocity. Now, which one of these describes the, the motion? Um, definitely not Newton's third law, because Newton's third law is about action and reaction. Newton's second law um, is asking us about, is telling us about um, a force that will cause acceleration. All right, so changing, changing velocity means acceleration. So that would be C. Uh, this question is about upthrust. So you have a sphere of weight 2.5 newtons. Therefore, the weight is 2.5 newtons. And is floating in the water with half of its volume submerged in the water. So it's floating. It means that the upthrust should be equal to the weight. Otherwise, it wouldn't flow. So it's stationary, it's not moving, therefore upthrust and weight uh, are the same. Now, upthrust depends on the volume of the submerged object. So that upthrust is caused by half of its volume. Now, if we fully submerge it, what's happening to the upthrust? Since the, since the volume of the submerged is going to be doubled, therefore upthrust will be also doubled. So in that case, the upthrust becomes 5, 5 newtons. The weight is still 2.5. The weight doesn't change. And therefore, we have, if I draw this object again, we have the weight. We have the force that we're pushing it down. And we have the upthrust. So 
um, on, it's still stationary, it doesn't move, therefore the forces have to be balanced. So if the up thrust is 5 newtons and the weight is 2.5 newtons, therefore F also needs to be 2.5 to be able to balance the sphere under the water. Therefore, this will be F. Question 4. A ball rolls off a table with a horizontal velocity and the ball takes 0.9 seconds to reach the ground and is landing on a distance S from the table. So this is a horizontal projectile. So remember that in projectiles we are always splitting the, the motion into the X direction and to the Y direction. And we consider these two motions to be kind of independent to each other. Now, assuming that there's no, assuming that there's no air resistance or anything, um, what will define, what will be the motion on the, on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis? Since there's no forces acting on it, it will be a constant, a uniform motion, constant speed, uniform motion. If we were talking about the, the vertical one, therefore, because we have weight, then in that case it will have been acceleration. But as I mentioned, we are looking at the different directions, we're looking at them as indep independently. So what happens on X is not really affected of what's happening on the Y. So since on the X axis is moving with a uniform uh, motion, therefore, in order to find the distance, we need to multiply speed times time. So the initial speed that is given up to the to the ball will be the one that's going to stay on the horizontal axis for the whole movement that will be 1.2 so speed will be 1.2 and the time is 0 0.9 uh, seconds therefore this relation is given by b which is the right answer and question five a sample of water of sea water is collected using a beaker the sample contains some particles of sand which settle at the bottom of the beaker. So which of the following would result in a decrease in the time taken for the sand to settle? So if we have the beaker with the water in it and the sand particles in. So if the viscosity of the seawater is low, what is viscosity is the resistance for something to flow therefore if we have low resistance so low low viscosity therefore the sand will settle to the bottom of the beaker much faster yep because low viscosity and this will result in a decrease in time so in that case this would be the answer why not the rest? If we had a smaller terminal velocity, that means it will have been the, the sun particles will have moved slower. So that wouldn't decrease the time, that will have increased the time. Lower temperature of the seawater. So remember that if we have low temperature in liquids, that, that results in high viscosity. So high viscosity, more resistance in flowing, therefore again, longer time for the sun to settle and a smaller particle of sand so there's there's no uh, effect of the size of the particles on the movement within uh, fluid so this won't affect the time therefore is the